Well, welcome. It seems strange saying this, but welcome to Saturday Night Live at 5 with CG and Buffalo and myself, Pastor Kwame. And it definitely is not night. It's, <laughs> we're going to have to probably change this just for the summer because, in the spring and summer, because it's not dark. It's not night yet. It's 5 o'clock. It's a wonderful, turn out to be a very wonderful Saturday afternoon early evening um i hope that you were able to get out this afternoon and enjoy the weather it really was very sort of cloudy and rainy um this morning um we here at cgn were actually out doing mobile food pantry in conjunction with our growing partnership with the folks who run the juneteenth festival at genesee or 1517 genesee street uh, on the east side of buffalo where they're for the next couple of Saturdays as they run this financial literacy workshop for folks in the area and for that matter whomever would like to come by um and with the really good great people of MT Bank um and so we're out doing our mobile pantry and it's a hybrid version this time because if you all saw the pictures we have um we're starting to form partnerships with a number of local vendors around the area so thanks to our local Tops grocery store, Tops Friendly Markets, um, on Elmwood Avenue, which is not too far from where we live, um, because they gave us a huge, huge um, box of collard greens today that we were able to share with folks, as well as potatoes, and actually the potatoes came from Aldi, so shout out to Aldi's, and um, mandarin oranges. <laughs> Um, I was reminiscing with one of our community members about how uh, those mandarin oranges remind me of my childhood where my grandmother would buy the cans of mandarin oranges and I would eat them. Um, and I was quite addicted to them throughout my entire childhood life. But that's neither here nor there. But it is welcome to, again, Saturday Night Live at 5 with CG and Buffalo. This is a time where we wind down our week um, for some meditation and some prayer. Um, and look forward to the week ahead. So, it's now been a whole week as we're into this new season of rebirth and renewal, as I like to call it. Um, Easter Sunday has come and gone, or Resurrection Sunday has come and gone, but we are still in the season of renewal and rebirth. We have seen what has been revealed to us, the promise that God will never leave us nor forsake us through um, His Son, our risen Christ. And so the question is now, what do we do? You know, a lot of people think that Easter is one and done, but I'm here to tell you that Easter is not one and done. And so in this first week of this new season, there are all these possibilities that are before us. And this weekend is we're actually also celebrating Earth Day. I know it was Friday, but I like to celebrate Earth Day the entire weekend. Why? Because it's really important. Um, caring for creation is extremely important. And I know sometimes people, and perhaps I think, I didn't see a lot of um, Earth Day activities as I'm used to in the past. Um, people really get out doing things and primarily and probably number one because of COVID, we still are in a pandemic um, and we have to continue to care for ourselves and for other folks. Loving our neighbor means washing our hands, wearing our mask, practicing social distancing when applicable and just making sure that folks are getting the great physical and mental health care and mental health care that they need. And that really extends to all of creation. So that also extends to all of our animal neighbors. I know a lot when we talk about creation, we don't. And <laughs> speaking of, you're probably going to hear a lot of noise from life happening outside my window. Um, I live in the city and I like to finally call this motorcycle season because as soon as it gets warm, all the wonderful local motorcyclists, um, motorcyclists come out and they parade up and down the street which is great, but it can be a little noisy for a broadcast. But as I was saying, we really have to really think about what creation means to us. I think there are a lot of people who deny climate change because they think, oh, God will fix everything. 
And they also point to Genesis and say, see, the earth was given to us. We're caretakers. First and foremost, let's go back to our biblical Hebrew and know that the words change um, in Genesis. Um, let's also be mindful that Genesis, the first, first five books of the Bible, are actually parts of the Torah. And we don't have dominion over earth, over creatures, over plants or animals or the seas. Definitely not the seas and the water. But we are caretakers. This is a gift that has been given to us. And when someone gives you a gift, they're giving it to you from their heart and their soul because you mean something to them. They're not giving you a gift to show off. They love you. So in turn, they give you a gift. And this is what the creator has given to us. And in turn, just like when you were younger, let's say, for example, you got um, a sweater or a t-shirt or a coat or something that perhaps your grandmother or your grandparents or your uncles and aunts, when they gave it to you, they kind of expect to see you using that gift in good ways. And this is what basically Creator has done for us. Creator has given us a gift and expect us in turn to use it in good ways. And unfortunately, we have taken the earth for granted. And then we're very shocked when the earth reacts. Part of the reason why we're having very horrible weather is because how we treat the planet. If you think about this, this planet is a living organism. And when you get sick, you try to fight off that which is trying to make you sick or make you feel even worse. And this is when we have tornadoes and hurricanes and cyclones and blizzards and thunderstorms and all these wonderful things that are reactions of nature trying to heal itself and the earth trying to heal itself. There is no other planet B, C, D, E out there. This is our home. Because in the solar system, although there are Earth-like planets, probably teeming with life, probably teeming with different life, different versions of us, are we different versions of them? Um, even with all of that, this is the place that God had planted us. So we owe it and it's our responsibility and we're accountable to God to take care of the space. And there's so many parts in our scriptures that talk about caring for creation. There are various places. Um, and we're creation is very prominent. I mean, let's be very real. We should not think so highly of ourselves as humanity and say, oh, God created us first. Oh, no. Creator created universe, cosmos, then all the planets, then all of the flora. We have the seas, the birds, animals, and then created us. This land is precious. This earth is precious. And the ways in which we treat it, we really, really have to start working harder. Because in a couple of years, if we don't, there's going to be some serious damage we're not going to be able to do. And there's not too much that we can do. There won't be too much at that point to do about it. And I don't know about you, but this place is very beautiful. There's so many things that are very beautiful about this planet. And... We're also caring for creation. I want us also to be mindful that we care for creation. The way in which we care for creation reflects how we care for one another. I, again, on Saturdays have been doing this. And sorry for moving the camera a little bit. I've been doing um, our food pantry, our mobile food pantry on Saturdays. And today we drove through the east side and it's very interesting how there I feel two different sides of the city there's the west side where I live and I see the progress here our proximity to downtown and then there's the east side and there are all these places where there could be community garden, gardens on like every block and other things and other green space that could be created for kids to play in if they don't have access to backyards because let's be clear there's a lot of 
apartments all over our city like there's in any city i'm from chicago and i can tell you like i feel like two-thirds of chicago is nothing but apartments but there's not enough green space here and the buildings are not being cared for because people did not think of the folks or residents who live on certain parts of our city and care enough for them to make sure that they too could enjoy nature because i'm telling you when you're enjoying creation or you have access to green spaces to creation to life to sun when you have opportunity to plant and grow things your mental wellness skyrockets your physical health skyrockets and i think we need to start focusing on that this having access to walking spaces um not walking spaces <laughs> walking paths is what i'm going to say Having access to walking paths, having access to, I was thinking, still thinking green spaces, having access to beaches, having access to all these things. We feel better when we're out. I mean, think about it. Like this morning, again, like I said, here in Buffalo, it was gray. Um, and I'd been out for most of the morning doing food pantry stuff and visiting a couple of farmer's markets as we're trying to make some connections with folks um, so we can get more fresh produce for our communities that we're serving. And it was great. And later on I looked up and I was like, the sun's come out, it's beautiful. Tomorrow's supposed to be like 73. I, I hope you all get a chance, wherever you are, get a chance to get out. If you can't get out, out at least, and hopefully you're in a place where there's some green space around you, whether it's your front door, your backyard, or you're close to walking spaces. Like, I know Delaware Park's gonna be crowded tomorrow, which I'm gonna get up early and go and do some walking. Um, but I mean, the sunshine. Seeing children outside playing, just outside. It's, that's what we're, we aren't supposed to be cooped up in our houses and our apartments and our condos separated from one another. We're actually supposed to be out and about being a part of community. Playing with our, you know, playing with our dogs, our cats, just enjoying life, biking, hiking, all those things. The reason why I talk about all this stuff is because, again, we talk about how climate change is not real, and it is. If we want to have more days like this where it's warm and nice and beautiful, where we can get out, then we really need to start doing it. And as people of faith, it's our responsibility. The creator gave us a gift I think that's the important thing to know here gave us a gift and we have to start being accountable to that gift and also not just for us but also for the generations that are coming in front of us that are waiting to be born we have every responsibility to make sure this planet is still here for them we enjoy it and in turn we pass it. That's what my ancestors taught us and are still teaching us because in my tradition, our ancestors are still speaking um, and they're telling us that we have to care for this place so that all may share in it and enjoy the sunshine. And especially after two years of a lot of horror and sadness and despair with this pandemic we definitely should be very thankful that we are alive and breathing and working toward it because of that because of that because of that because of coming out of the pandemic even if you were touched by the pandemic the fact that you are still here and you're able to live and breathe and be like wow i can get out what's our call we get to easter sunday and we celebrate and Everyone looks very beautiful in their clothing, and we totally forget about what's happening. And we totally forget about, um, we forget about what has happened. We forget about, um, what's before us. We forget about the entire season. We forget about this is a season of renewal and rebirth. We forget about all of that. And we just go on with our lives. Just like we forget about when we have communion and we come to the table and the table's been open to us, parts of creation are at our table. 
There's bread, there's wine. Probably nearby, there's a baptismal font full of water. We come, we are fed, we are forgiven, we are washed over, and then we go out, not to go on to the next thing, but to be like, how can I immerse myself in creation? How can I give back to what has been given to me? How can I be a gift to someone else and walk with them in their journey of this season of renewal and rebirth? Well, I hope in these next couple of warm days that we're going to have, I hope you're able to get out and enjoy creation and realize what this season is about, renewal and rebirth. It's a new thing. God revealing itself in new ways. Reminding us of God's love for us. And that's it for me here at Saturday Night Live at 5 with CGN Buffalo and myself, Pastor Kwame. Have a wonderful day evening it's so weird it's so light outside but have a wonderful evening and i hope to see you next week and as always join us on wednesdays at two o'clock for wednesdays in a while midweek wednesday worship the renewal season <laughs> every like said every wednesday at two o'clock saturday night live at saturday night live at five every saturday um and we will be doing our mobile food pantry on Wednesdays, the first, second, and third Wednesdays, and for now, a couple of Saturdays. Just be tuning in. Oh, and we need volunteers. We've got this new bus. Have you seen our bus? Have you gone past our website? We have a new bus. We need folks to help us retrofit this bus so we can get it up and going on the road. We are looking for volunteers, so email me at infocgnbuffalo at gmail.com. That's peace.